This is the overall wiring diagram for the blower motor control processor. As you can see, here we have the blower motor, the actual controller itself, which links to the HVAC control module, which is your AC unit in the middle of your Hummer. And then connected to the blower motor con controller is this line here, which is 12 volts, and which comes via the blower fuse, which is a 40 amp fuse. Now, the interesting thing to note here is that this line does not come through the ignition. So if you have a fault with your blower motor controller, whereby the MOS transistor that controls the blower motor actually goes short circuit, you will find that the blower motor is permanently connected to 12 volts. And the only way to stop it is to actually unplug it or disconnect the battery. They're the only two options. It's very alarming. Your blower motor comes on, it won't switch off no matter what you do. And it's very difficult to resolve straight away. That's the overall circuit. So here we've highlighted the blower motor. You can see you've got the speed control input, which is just here. And you've got the battery positive voltage, which is here. A ground connection here. And then there's the actual motor itself. It's very simple, not difficult to understand from a wiring diagram perspective. Here is a CAD model of the blower motor controller. Before I continue, please don't ask me for a model or any of the CAD data that I have. I cannot give it to you. To purely show you what the actual unit is like from an electronics and mechanical point of view. We have three terminals. You've got your connection to the battery, input and ground. And then there's two wires coming out which go to your blower motor. On the back in the airflow is an aluminium heat sink which sits in the air. The whole module is secured by these lugs. And then inside you can see that the PCB has a MOSFET transistor, this one here, whose case is actually in direct contact with the aluminium heat sink. I'm not exactly clear whether there should be an insulating pad between the case of this device and the heat sink. I have found no matter how hard I try to mount a thermal pad between the two, I find that this device just overheats and burns out, which is probably the, the original problem. Unfortunately, the case, this device actually connects to plus 12 volts, as you'll see on the circuit diagram in a moment. That means that if you don't put an insulating layer on here, this heat sink will be also sitting at 12 volts. Some people think that if they put thermally conductive insulating grease on a device that will insulate it from this, it won't. I mean, you cannot rely on that at, uh, at all. Having said that, this aluminium block sits in the, the plastic ducting inside the Hummer, and I don't think it's an issue. It hasn't been an issue for me. It, you do that at your own risk. This is the MOSFET device here. And, and this is the controller chip. If we go back to the actual CAD model itself again, you can see this chip on here is an AA539B 1MN37. Now, if anyone can find the source of those devices, I'd be interested to know. As far as I know, no longer any available. I've tried to get some from China, but uh, to no avail. If we look at the electrical diagram, you can see there's that device. There are some descriptions of the pins on there, which I think are applicable. But here we have the wiring. And as you can see, the motor connects to VBAT and then to this MOSFET. So if this goes short circuit, you'll find that the motor is permanently grounded. And that's why it continues to run, even if you turn the ignition off. This chip basically takes a pulse width modulated waveform um, which comes in and then converts it to a DC level on this MOSFET. That's how it works. For those of you who want to repair your own boards, then the way to do it would be to heat each one of these legs up on the MOSFET itself. Just put your screwdriver underneath and then just lift it up and go along until you've managed to separate each pin from the board. The last leg will come away fairly easy. I found that in the actual design of the unit, this pad on the device doesn't always manage to touch the aluminium heatsink. It's very close and there's also this capacitor is very close to the heatsink as well. So I found that putting a bit of double sided tape between the body of this and the PCB a, make sure that this device presses against the heatsink, and B, it makes sure that this capacitor doesn't short. That could be a, another problem with the, the design. I, I don't know for sure, but it's very, very, very close. So the device itself is an Infineon IRFB 
A1405P, as I mentioned in my last video. For those who are interested, this is the spec sheet for the device, which you can readily find via Google. The important thing to note is that the actual case of the device is hot all the time. In most cases, this device either goes open circuit or short circuit. If it goes open circuit, your fan just won't operate no matter what setting you've got on HVAC. If it goes short circuit, it's the same thing, except here the fan stays on permanently and won't switch off. Most of it can be resolved by replacing this component. If we take a look at the speed control signal, you can see from this graph here that the input signal varies between half a volt and 5.5 volts. It's basically a 5 volt swing. The frequency is actually set to 35.7 hertz. That just stays constant. The thing that changes is the off period. That's this part here. When the off period is small, the blower motor speed is low. The wider this pulse is, the faster it goes. Plotted here, the actual equivalent, that well, the fan voltage for each of the steps on your HVAC. So step zero, the actual duty cycle is very small. When we get to step eight, the duty cycle is very large and you can see that the voltage on the fan goes up. That should be a straight line, but it's not exactly a straight line, but close enough. So you change your fan setting on your HVAC unit, you actually change the voltage that's across your blower motor and thereby increase its speed. That's how it works. Effectively, you alter the duty cycle of this waveform to change the fan speed. This is with the blower at zero speed. The input sits at around five and a half volts. There's no signal, no modulation at all, and the blower is off. Here we have the minimum setting. So the average voltage has dropped to 5.2 uh, with a peak at 5.5. And you can see there are some modulations. It's, it's sitting at about 35.2 Hertz. Speed setting eight is 22 milliseconds. It doesn't look as if there's room for a ninth, even if there could be one. Uh, we'd run out of um, period. This is a picture of the actual physical board. Uh, you can see it's quite close to the CAD models which I produced, which I must add are only an approximation. They can never be 100% the same as the original. This is the space where the MOSFET mounts, and you can just see the outline of a little pad that I stuck on there to put beneath the MOSFET and the PCB just to lift it up a little bit higher and then solder onto these three pads here. So that's what we're going to be soldering onto. This is the capacitor I talked about, which is very close to actually coming in contact with the aluminium heatsink. I'm surprised there's not been fuses blown in Hummers because that's shorted out. That actual case of that is ground. So if that ground touched to the heatsink and the heatsink happened to be live, then um, it could short out the controller and it could be a risk so it may be worth putting a piece of insulating tape over the top of that capacitor just to make sure it cannot touch. There are the two motor connections which have got pigtails on them which are a real pain because it ties the, the board to the case. You can't get the board out of the case without desoldering those. There's no place for, for dissipation on this fiberglass PCB so the heat purely travels from this device to the heatsink. So that is the the crux of the problems with this unit is the fact that the heat flow is insufficient and this device burns out. The other problems we get is with condensation creeping in and eating the tracks away. If you are looking at this unit just check for signs of corrosion and track damage because that could also affect the operation of the board. Anyway, I hope you like this video. I hope it's given you a bit more information. I hope you managed to troubleshoot your units. Thanks for watching.